So if you clicked on this video, chances are you've already seen Peter McKinnon's uh, video on these photo drills. Um, and if you haven't, I'll see if I can try to link it up in the corner. Uh, if not, it'll be linked in the description. If you haven't seen it, uh, I'll go over it real quick. Basically, he's doing these photo drills on one photo, editing this photo five different times in like five different styles. And I thought that was a great idea um, to really kind of flex those like creative creative muscles, I guess, and and just kind of get that rhythm, keep that rhythm, keep keep yourself fresh when it comes to editing your photos. Now, for me personally, again, I thought it was a great idea. I don't really get, I don't really edit too many photos that often, or as much as I would like to, um, mainly because I don't really get out and shoot that often as much as of, as of lately. So I hope to change that here in the future. But uh, what he ended up doing was just editing the same photo, just five different styles, and I thought that was a great idea. I have plenty of photos uh, from the past few years that I could mess around with, and yeah, I, it was something that I wanted to try and kind of make. A um, kind of routinely thing, like at least once every week or so, or every couple of weeks, just to kind of again just stay fresh, uh, try out new tools and try out different different sliders, and really kind of uh, get to know the editing software that you're using. So, so with all that said, let's just kind of get right into the video. For those of you guys who do not know me, my name is Theo. I do a lot of photo and video content here on this channel, as well as a little bit of tech uh, here and there. Uh, so if that is your thing, definitely uh, stick around and consider subscribing. I am about this close to 1,000 subscribers. Uh, it, it would be amazing if you guys would help me out with that. Uh, so definitely hit that subscribe button and uh, hit that notification bell so you guys get notified when I do post new videos. So for the purpose of this video, I am going to be editing the same five styles that Peter McKinnon did in his video. One, to keep it, keep it kind of simple and quick so this video doesn't really drag on too long. And two, uh, I am still learning quite a bit and he did cover some things in the styles that he edited that I haven't done before. So I thought just to kind of keep it simple, keep it, keep it the same, um, keep the same categories uh, so this video doesn't drag on too long. His video was pretty short, it was like five or six minutes, so hopefully I can kind of keep it around <laughs> that range. But yeah, it, it'll probably end up being a little bit longer just because I do want to like emphasize, emphasize, emphasis, emphasize, <sighs> gosh, um, emphasize on, on what I'm actually learning here and like with this exercise, like I'm utilizing tools and, and different things that I don't normally utilize. And I kind of want to share that with you guys so that it'll like encourage you guys to really try this exercise and actually get something out of it. Uh, same as I did. So, so let's just kind of jump right into it. So this first black and white, he just basically pulled the saturation all the way down. Um, there is a, uh, also uh, real quick, um, just wanted to clarify, I am using Capture One as my editing software. Um, I don't want to get too into one of the whole battle between Capture One and, and Lightroom and all that, but uh, plain and simple, the main reason why I do is just because I can pay one time and not have to keep that subscription going. I like being able to choose when I want to spend money and uh, Capture One kind of gives me that um, it's also a great editor as well, so I'm not really losing out on too much. So that's why I use Capture One in a nutshell. So kind of just jumping right back into it. So he ended up just pulling the, the saturation slider all the way down. Now there is a, a module for black and white photos. Um, I'm just gonna end up doing what he did for, this, for the sake of this video. I'm not really messing with any kind of color channels or anything like that, so uh, it'll work uh, for the purpose of this video. So I just was messing around with the exposure, trying to get that dialed in just right. Uh, pulled down the highlights, lifted the shadows a little bit, and brought those blacks right back down. Uh, gave it a little, little bump of a clarity, just to kind of keep things uh, nice and sharp. I messed around with the dehaze slider. Um, I never knew it really had any effect on black and whites. So that's something he did, so I thought I'd try it, give it a, give it a try, and, and see how it turned out. Uh, I wanted to add a little bit of grain, like just like he did in his photo. I really like the Silver Ranch uh, on in Capture One. Um, it's real nice, fine, uh, gives a little bit of texture to the photo. I went up and added an adjustment layer to uh, do a redo mask. Made that nice and skinny and get that right around my whole body. And brought the exposure down uh, just a bit, just to, just to kind of focus uh, the tension on me. And went back to the background layer and then added a little bit of a vignette. And there you go, that's before and after. Um, I really liked how the black and white ended up turning out. I think it ended up being my favorite out of the five. But one of the things I loved about this like whole exercise in general um, already was just the fact that I'm using tools that I don't normally use. I don't I don't really think of like the radial and like graduated um, filters like I, like they're 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 tools that are very powerful. But again, like I don't 
I don't really think to use them. So this whole idea was already making me kind of try out new things and, and really kind of, again, just flex those creative muscles. So um, yeah, the already using tools that I don't normally use, the whole grain thing was something that I don't normally use. And I kind of really like the way it looks and I want to try to use them on some of my other photos and kind of re-edit things just to add a little bit of grain to give that little touch. So the whole point of this whole photo drills is already, it's kind of meeting my expectations with only editing just the first photo. So I thought I'd just <laughs> fill you in. It's something I definitely recommend for you guys to kind of experiment and push yourself to, to really improve yourself as a photographer. Anyways, moving on to the next one. So the next one ended up being the faded edit and I went straight to the curves and ended up lifting that up um, getting those blacks nice and faded and kind of mess around. Got that curve, kind of somewhat of an S curve, kind of dialed in, um, went back up to the exposure sliders and mess around with the contrast, pulled that back just a little bit, pulled the highlights down, just, just a little bit, uh, pulled the shadows up, again, just kind of bouncing out with the blacks, bringing those back down. Uh, went over to the color editor and I went over to the orange tab. The orange and the uh, pillars were a little bit too bright for me so I wanted to bring those down just a tad. Went over to the blue slider and pulled the saturation down just a little bit just to kind of get that keep that those, those colors kind of washed out. Went down added a little bit of a vignette again just to kind of pull the focus away from the cement uh, that's in front of, in the foreground and uh, yeah here's your before and after. But yeah those uh, simple things uh, really made a huge difference. That was, one th that was one thing he did mention in his video was just to keep it simple keep it um as minimal as possible and it really kind of shows just how much of an impact you can make to a photo by making you know very minimal changes to certain things so again i'm learning quite a bit already in and, and these first two photos that were it moving on uh, to the vintage one so starting out here with a saturation pulling that back quite a bit um just leaving a hint of color into the photo and then bumping up the temperature getting that nice and warm uh, faded look And ended up pulling down the highlights quite a bit again and uh, lifting the shadows and then balance the shadows out with the blacks. Uh, pulled the white bites back just a little bit more. Went over to the curves and lifted that blacks up again. Kind of doing a similar, uh, similar curves to the last photo but not lifting the highlights nearly as much. Uh, went over to the colors again, messing with those orange pillars. Uh, getting those kind of dialed in. They're a little too orange. A little too saturated, I guess, for the sake of the photo. <laughs> uh, went down to the film grain. Again, went with harsh grain this time, just to make it kind of a little bit more aged, a little bit more kind of gringy, if, if that's a word. <laughs> went up to the sharpness. I had a, cut up quite a bit of sharpness just to kind of get the details in there. Uh, went over to the clarity, added quite a bit of that, and then brought down the structure quite a bit. I was lifting the, the the detail up quite a bit because I wanted to kind of mess with the structure and kind of give that like soft halo-y kind of look to the details in the photo. That's something I noticed with like older, super old, uh, washed out uh, film photos. And I don't know if it's like a, because they're getting wet or something like that, or if it's just what happens when they get developed. But that was something that I thought of when I thought of, uh, when I was thinking about editing a uh, vintage photo. Uh, but yeah, I just went down, went down last touch, just added a vignette and Here's the before and after. But again, yeah, when I think of a vintage photo, you'll see kind of like those halo-y kind of washed out edges uh, in all the details in, in, the, in the photos. And that's kind of what I thought of when it came to, to a vintage photo. It turned out great. Again, using things that I never really use <laughs> when I normally edit my photos. So moving on. So uh, the next category is I'm calling just a contrasty photo. In Peter McKinnon's video, he said this is the kind of style that he would use. Uh, for editing his photos normally, and he has a very kind, of, uh, a very kind of contrasty, kind of saturated look. Um, so I just kind of went with a normal basic edit. This one's a little more simple, um, but let's just kind of get into it. So right on the exposure, just a tad. Uh, again, pulling the highlights down. The highlights in this photo in general were just super blown out. So and all of them kind of pulling them down. Uh, lifting the shadows, uh, pulling, balancing them out with the blacks, bringing them back down. Again, bring those whites down just a little bit more. I uh, went down to the curves and just did a basic S curve, uh, lifting the blacks just a tad on the bottom there and then just kind of balancing out with a uh, slight S curve. Went down to the or uh, the color slider and the orange tab, um, getting those kind of those colors dialed in at like a more reddish orange and then um, went over to the red slider again just to kind of 
the red, get the red side of it, just dial it in just right. Uh, went over to the blue tab. I like my blues kind of more of the cy cyanogen, cy cy teal, kind of whatever that color is. <laughs> um, I like my blues on that side of the slider. Uh, but yeah, went down a little bit further and uh, added a vignette. And uh, here's your before and after. Yeah, so with that one, again, turned out as a basic, simple edit, got it nice and punchy, real contrasty, nice and saturated. Yeah, one thing to touch on though, like I've been adding a vignette on every photo, and that's something I don't normally usually add on my photos at all. Um, and I didn't realize how like powerful, I guess, the tool is, or how much it can really draw your attention into the center of the photo. And in a photo like this that has a very bright foreground, it really does kind of uh, pull your attention away from the subject. So. Uh, just something that I've been using on all these photos that really made a big enough difference to to the photo and that that's something again I don't normally use so just loving this whole photo drill thing anyways last one <laughs> so the last one was a very like uh, bright and washed out type of edit um, so this one uh, again minimal edits to this one uh, this one really wasn't my favorite out of the bunch uh, just because it just seemed like a very washed out version of the original, but again, that is a look that people go for, so why not try to exercise, uh, to kind of exercise those creative muscles and really kind of dial this look down. So starting out with just raising the exposure just a little bit, raising the mid-tones with the brightness slider, just a tad, again, pulling those highlights down and those whites, just because that sky was blown out on this photo. I pulled the shadows down just a little bit, or crushed the shadows just a little bit and raised, raised the blacks a little bit, kind of did an opposite effect. There, I thought I kind of balanced the, the brighter look uh, for the, this photo. Went on to the color tab and then just got those uh, those orange pillars, kind of dialed in with the red and orange uh, tabs. And then just brought those blues down to the side side engine. And then, uh, yeah, that about did it. Here's the last before and after. I didn't want to end up going with the vignette uh, for this last one just because uh, with it being a very bright and airy kind of photo, um, darkening the foreground would kind of take away from like that style that, that kind of theme so uh, I just left it and, and yeah I think it works it kind of balances out with, with how bright the sky is and really kind of uh, focuses in on my black uh, my black jacket on this photo so yeah I think it turned out pretty decent for a bright style for a bright style that I don't normally uh, edit in so well that about does it for this one guys uh, if you guys did get something out of this and you guys were learning uh, learning along with me um, I had a blast doing this and I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as I did definitely hit that like button It is much appreciated. It would definitely help me out uh, And again consider subscribing. I am this close to a thousand subscribers It would be super awesome if you guys could help me out with that and I promise that a lot more content with uh, just like this will be coming uh, your way uh, again I have so much so much to learn here on YouTube and I uh, hope to share those experiences with you guys so you guys can get something out of me learning and we can all learn together. <laughs> but yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Later.